Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Sketchfab live stream. Um, this month, we are lucky to be joined by Uzair and Steve from the Blipar team, who will be talking to us about uh, Blip Builder and how to create AR experiences using assets from the Sketchfab library. Um, before we get into that, um, a few um, Sketchfab announcements uh, and reminders. So uh, you may be aware that we are continuing to run Sketchfab weekly art challenge. So this is a weekly prompt to help you get into a creative routine. Um, there's a link in the description um, to, to this page. Uh, this week's prompt is computer. And there's also in uh, the blog post, there's a full link of all of the um, prompts for the year. Um, so you can catch up if you've missed any along the way. We are also um, announcing a call for proposals. This is a, an opportunity to pitch for a paid commission. Uh, Sketchfab is looking to um, commission a couple of 3D models, uh, or rather a 3D model for a couple of milestones for the community. Uh, we're on our way to reaching 10 million members and over 5 million 3D models on the platform. So if you are a commercial artist or um, interested in applying, please go to the link in the description and there's all the information that you will need. Um, also, also coming up, in fact, I'll do this this way around, um, Sketchfab will be at Unreal Fest 2022, um, October 17th to the 20th in New Orleans. You can meet the team and have a chat with us there. Um, and also this month, it's a busy month because um, we're also going to be at the Blender conference in Amsterdam, 27th to the 29th of October as well. Um, so you can you meet us, uh, some of the team at either of those events if you're in town. Um, and you work with Blender or Unreal uh, and interested in uh, what we're doing. So please like and subscribe um, and do uh, drop any questions and comments you have about this stream into the, uh, the live chat and we'll address those at the end of the stream. Um, and now I'll just introduce um, our guests and they'll take it away and uh, start giving us a demo of, of their platform. So on the stream today, we have Uzair Khan. Uh, Uzair is uh, augmented reality product manager with several years of experience creating and delivering AR products and activations in partnership with some of the biggest companies in the world. Uzair is an AR advocate and a thought leader on all things metaverse. Um, Steven Schutter is a front end engineer lead at Blipar for the past five years with more than 20 years of engineering experience in the console games industry, world-class companies, including Electronic Arts, Lucas, Lucas Arts, economy and others. He combines technical knowledge and the goal of satisfying user experience to create our, the no-code AR editor Blip Builder. So we have some very cool and uh, uh, well-experienced people on the stream today. Welcome. Thanks, Sam. Great. Thanks, Tom. And I will pass over to, to you guys to begin uh, the demonstration uh, of Blip R and Blip Builder when you're ready. Cool. Perfect. Thanks for that. Um... I'm just going to uh, throw up a few slides, and I promise we're not going to dwell too long on these. I know uh, no one wants to sort of dial in and, and see a bunch of slides. Um, but yeah, so uh, hey, so uh, as, as Tom mentioned, I'm Uzer. I'm one of the product managers at Blipart, and I'm super excited to talk to you about our Sketchfab integration today, what we've done, why we've done it, and how it's making a difference. So just first, a little bit about Blipar. So at Blipar, we've been pioneering augmented reality for over a decade and helping to build out some of the technical foundations that enable the amazing experiences you see today. For us, it's always been about democratizing AR and removing as many barriers to entry so that not only is it easy to create, but it's also easy to share and consume. And in order for us to deliver on our mission, we have a stack of solutions that can help any individual or any organization wherever they may be on their AR journey. We have our no-code platform, Blip Builder, which we'll be talking about today, which lets anyone create compelling AR experiences without writing a single line of code. We have our SDK tool for developers looking to create more powerful AR. And finally, we have a studio team who help brands and organizations launch premium augmented reality strategies and campaigns. But today we want to focus on Blip Builder, which is our free, which is our code-free AR creation platform. It allows anyone to create AR by simply dragging and dropping different elements into a scene. You can then build that scene out to tell an immersive story through animations and effects. And once you've built your content, share it with the world in augmented reality with a single click that works any with a single link that works anywhere and is accessible instantly. 
There are no apps required and it's completely free to build and publish. So we've removed all barriers to entry for anyone wanting to populate the metaverse. So that's an overview of the platform. And up until now, it's been great for bringing stuff together and turning it into immersive content. But now we're really excited to have been able to integrate Sketchfab into our platform, which allows anyone to access Sketchfab's rich library of 3D assets and models directly within Blip Builder. Users can now browse and find the perfect model, import it straight into their project, and publish and share their AR experience with everyone, all for free and all inside Blip Builder. And we truly believe this is the next step in making AR creation easier and more accessible for everyone. So I don't want to bore you with you know more slides as I said at the top, but so I think it's uh, best if we sort of go straight into a live demo to see how the integration works and all the cool things that it can enable. And in this demo, what we're going to show you is how you can use Blip Builder to create a marketing campaign to promote a new releasing video game concept that we've made up that introduces you to all the different characters, shares ex exclusive content, and allows anyone to pre-order. And I've got my colleague Steve here to show you how you can use Blip Builder and Sketchfab to create some really magical experiences like this one that I've just described. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to hand it over to Steve to show us off Blip Builder. All right, give me one moment. I'll bring up my scene. All right, so you can see my screen now. Okay, I am assuming. Yeah, so, 100%. Oh, great. Uh, so I'll be describing how to quickly create an AR experience in our no code tool, Blip Builder. Uh, that mock AR digital marketing experience to drive awareness for a video game release. And I'll cover the major points for the creation of this experience, which are one is importing assets from Sketch Sketchfab and creating an animated scene. And then I'll be adding some lighting effects. And finally, I'll connect multiple scenes together with touch events to make the scene interactive. Okay, so uh, I won't be covering every single step, but uh, all of the details that I will be skipping over, which is mostly just copy pasting and things like that, uh, can be found in our getting started and documentation pages, which are available from the learn button in the top right of Blip Builder. So in order to get into Blip Builder, you can sign into our, uh, our hub, uh, create an account, and when you create an experience, you'll be dropped into Blip Builder and it will look something like this. And the your assets are on the left. Uh, the area where you're creating your AR experiences is, is in the middle in the stage here. And the properties for your selected elements are on the right. It's a fairly standard a 3D editor layout, and uh, but I will jump right into it. So the scene that uh, Uzer was just showing a moment ago will look something like this on your phone. So I have a pre-recorded uh, video of yeah, the experience on your phone, if it will play. There we go. So there's some animations of items fading in, models flying in, landing on a platform, and some panels showing up in the background. And these, these items are all hovering around you in 3D space as you're looking at them with your phone. And you can tap on the, one of these panels to bring up information about each character. So I tapped on the panel for this little robot and it'll show up on the screen and there's some background music playing and if you scan this qr code on the right with your phone right now you should be able to see this experience live on your phone all right so i will jump right into how to create the basics of this scene so the initial thing is uh just creating a scene with a platform and the character flying in and maybe the title in the background so what I will do is I'll start with, this is a, an asset that I've imported from Sketchfab and I'll show you how to do that right now. So in the assets panel on the left, you can click this plus button. You can import assets from your local computer or we'll be using Sketchfab today. So I will search for round platform. I happen to know that there's a, well, I think there's a nice round platform for me here. Uh, Okay, there we go. There's a there's the one that I chose before. So you can just click on this. And the first time that you uh, try this in Blip Builder, you will be asked to sign in with Sketchfab, but that's a very simple process. You can create a, you can 
sign in for Sketchfab for free. And same with Blip Builder, you can create a Blip Builder account for free. And um, so once you have selected your asset, you can preview it in the window, make sure that it's the asset that you want. All of the information is displayed here, including any licensing information that may be involved with the assets and click the import button. And once your asset is in your asset panel on the left, now there's two of them because I already had it there before, but uh, you can either drag and drop into the scene to place it or you can double click and it will add it to your scene. And you can see I have another platform here. You can move it around and you can move scale and rotate things using these tools here. So you can uh, click on each of these tools for scaling objects and rotating and positioning it exactly how you want. But I'll leave the original one in place since that's the one that I want to use. OK. So the second part of our scene, if you recall, is the title fading in. So. This is made with a simple uh, image file, a PNG with some transparency in it. And it just says beta break. So I've already imported this into my assets folder from my local machine. So this is right here. So in order to add an image, you can just drop it into your assets. And then once it's in your assets, you can drop it into your scene or you can double click to add it to your scene. And then you'll want to scale it how you like, move it to the position that you want. You can use the, the camera cube up on the right to rotate around in your scene. You can also drag on the background to pan around in your scene so you can see it from different angles. And if you ever get your camera in a strange position, you can click on the home button and bring it back to its normal view. All right, so in order to make this title panel, something how we want it to look. We position it where we want, and then we can add some animations. So in the animation panel down at the bottom, uh, we have a time slider, and you can see time advancing and the original one that was already placed in the scene, you can see scaling up and fading in. And that's this line right here. So the one that we just added, if we were going to do that from scratch, what we need to do is position the time slider where we want one of the animations to happen. And in this case, we want a fade in. And we can double click. It will put it at the current timeline position that you have your time slider. And the length of it adjusts the length of your fade in. So if you want a quick fade in, you can make it shorter. If you want a slow fade in, you can make it very long. But we'll, we'll make it roughly the same as our original. So it fades in. And then similarly for scaling it up, we place the time slider where we want it, and we'll put it at the same place as the original's timing. And we double click on scale animation effect. And the default scale animation scales it up by a factor of two. But if you want to change how it scales it, you move the time slider to where you want to change the scale in the animation, and you adjust it accordingly. So we want it to be about that big when it finishes. And we want it very small at the start. So it will look something like that. And with most of the animation blocks, you can also adjust the value at intermediate times, and it will add keyframes. So if we want to, say, make, make this thing, instead of just a simple scale up to a size, we want it to bounce back and forth, like get big and small, we can do that too, and it will look something like this. And of course, you will want to adjust that to exactly how your creative vision requires, but uh, that is the basics. So that's how we've created our title panel. I'll, I'll delete the new one, and we'll just use the original for now. And the final step in our little animated sequence is this character. So this is a character that we've imported from Sketchfab. And I will do that right now also. So I happen to know that it is a cyborg. And you can also filter your models by whether they have animation or not. So I'll do that. 
So we're looking for a cyborg with some animation and a, this is the one that we liked. So we'll, we'll choose that. We can preview it before we import to make sure that uh, it's something that we want. It looks great. And we click our import, import button and it will show up in the assets panel just as the previous platform did. So we have our added platforms and we, we're have a duplicate of our animated character. But just for the sake of demonstration, we will use the new one that we've just added. So you can just drag it into the scene. If you drag something onto a surface, it'll place it on that surface. If you drag it onto the background, it will place it against the background grid. And if you double click, it will just put it out in front of the camera somewhere. So there's our character. When you import 3D models from Sketchfab, if they have embedded animations, it will automatically place the first animation on the timeline for you. So that model that we just added has the animation already on the timeline. You can either, if you don't want that there, you can delete it and it will be the static pose of the model. Or if you want to change the animations, you can select the animation block and change which embedded clip you want to use. So some, some models will have dozens of animations embedded in them. But for our purpose, we have our new newly added model. And we'll just for the sake of demonstrating this, I will delete the original. So we just have our new one. And we'll make it fade in like we did with the title. And we're not going to be too concerned about the timing right now. but. Uh, uh, select the model and add our fade in animation. So it fades in as it's flying in and it lands on the platform. I'll put it off to the side just to demonstrate that this is live right now. So if you want to see what you've done, you can click publish and it will just take a moment and it will display a QR code that you can scan with your phone. And we should just be able to scan this right now if you have a phone available. Um, you can scan that QR code and you'll see the model that we just added to the scene flying into the edge of the platform where we put it. And you may need to look around with your camera to see it. It might be off to the side a little bit, depending on where you started with your camera, but looks like it is working. So you can try that yourself with that QR code. And I'll close that out in just a moment. All right, so we had our model flying in. And the next step that I wanted to show is adding some effects to this. So if you recall from the original video that we watched, the platform was not a simple gray like this. It had this purple tint to it, and there were these shadows below the character. We can look at those more closely if we zoom in here. And I'll show on the timeline the shadows are animating under the character. So what we've done to achieve this is we put a couple of colored spotlights up above the scene, and they are animating. So you can see that they're spinning around and making those shadows move below the character. So you can see from above, that's the effect that you're going to get. So we are going to quickly put that same thing together here. So we'll start out with our scene with the character flying in. I have this already constructed as we just did. So in order to add this effect, I'll uh, move up a little bit in the scene. And over on the left, other than our assets that we have added in our own library, these are all assets that I've added myself already. Uh, below this, we have some stock items like text, um, specialized items like cylinder maps and sphere maps to wrap images around the user and a bunch of stock shapes that you can use and then finally at the bottom we have our lighting so this is what we're going to add right now so i'm going to double click add a spotlight and you can see it's a it defaults to a white spotlight that we can move around i'll add another one uh, move it over to the right like this and we'll give these each a color. It, we'll, we'll not use purple this time. We'll use different colors just to differentiate from the original. 
And in order to animate these, how I how the scene was originally animated, I will select both of them and I will group them with the G. Uh, in, in case you're looking for keyboard shortcuts, the quick actions panel has a lot of keyboard shortcuts over on the right here. And you can also click on these in order to perform the action, but it shows the keyboard shortcuts as well. So I grouped these two lights with G so I can now move them around together. So if I, if I select one, it will give me the group. I can move the group and I'm going to animate this group. Again, we move to our timeline and wherever we want to start our animation, we have our group selected, we have our time where we want it, and we add a rotation animation. So the default rotation animation that we add to the scene is rotating not the way that we want. It, it gives you a 360 degree rotation around the Z axis. We're gonna change that to a 360 degree rotation around the Y axis. And if I select the rotation animation, you can see its duration is this long. It starts at this time and there are some other properties that you can add, but it defaults to looping. So it will do that 360 rotation forever, even after the end of the block, it continues to loop. So we have our two lights rotating. And if we go back to our home position here and press play, we can see that is the effect that we wanted there. All right, so that's part two of our process, adding some effects to our scene. And our third and final process that I'll cover is connecting it all together into multiple scenes so that you can have an interactive experience where you tap on items and it moves to a new scene where it shows in our, in our example, the specific character properties. So this thir third scene, I've done a little bit more of what I've done in the examples that we put together already, but I've added a background video just by dragging it in from the assets into the background. And that will play automatically when it starts up according to its properties. Once you drag a video into the scene, you'll see properties over here that you can adjust, but we'll just uh, gloss over that for now. It's a, it's a video that plays in your background. And then I've added another image over here. And when you select an object, it has the ability to add touch actions over on the right. And I've assigned a go to scene touch action. And then I can select a scene. But right now, I only have one scene. So this is the scene selector button up here. We can add new scenes by clicking here. And we'll just add scene two. All right. So it is an empty scene. And then we can switch back and forth between our scenes editing with these arrows. So I can look at scene one. And then now on this go to scene action, there's scene two available to me here. So when I tap on that, it will go to scene two. And in scene two, I can add items just as I did before, or I can also just copy paste things. If I select multiple things in my scene with like, uh, by clicking on them. And if you want to do multi-select, you can command click or control click on a PC and then your usual copy paste operations. I can copy them, paste them into the new scene. Uh, so that's a quick shortcut for generating new content. So I could place that platform again, add my other characters in there, and then we'll end up with our final experience like we saw right here. So that second scene is just another character animated with that same platform and different panels on the left and right describing its contents. So that pretty much describes how you would create that entire interactive experience. And uh, I will hand it back to Uzair to finish up with our uh, summary here. Nice. Thank you, Steve. Cool. Um, to answer that, Steve, you know, um, that's genuinely, you know, one of the coolest AR experiences that, that we've seen built with the platform, really utilizing all the different lighting, all the different panels, uh, and, and really making use of all the cool characters that you can find in the Sketchfab uh, library. Um, 
but you know that that was an AR marketing concept. And in all honesty, building the experience is only half the story. Now that the experience has been published, we can share that with anyone across any of our customer touch points. And we've got this QR code up on the screen now, which is the actual QR code for the live project. So anyone watching on desktop can actually scan this QR code in this poster and access the experience for themselves right now. If they're on mobile, then don't worry. Uh, we'll, we'll share this via our socials um, and, and maybe through the chat as well. But with this QR code, you're actually seeing the power of uh, web AR. It's a simple web link that can be shared and accessed anywhere at any time by anyone. We can put the QR code onto our offline touch points like posters and flyers, or even on the video game's box art so prospective players can check it out before purchase. Alternatively, we can inject this link into all of our digital touch points, like any social media platform, including Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and TikTok, for users to enter straight away without worrying about downloading or installing apps or exiting the social media platform. And this is what we mean when we say we're removing all the barriers to entry for AR. You just saw Steve create a simple experience inside Blip Builder, press one click to publish it, and that same link can be shared across any of your touch points, across any of your social media platforms, all in one go. And gaming is just one use case where AR adds value. You can use Blip Builder for a variety of, of use cases where AR can really support and drive excitement and engagement. TV and entertainment. So you can use AR um, to promote you know, upcoming shows, movies, get people associated with the characters, just as we did with the, um, the beta break game concept. Retail and package goods to add uh, to make a physical package go further and turn products into their own media channel. Education to make learning more immersive and exciting for standard education or even for employee training. Or just general marketing use cases to show off new product launches and campaigns. Even the experience that Steve just made, the character select option is essentially a way to just you know make a 3D portfolio of any characters you've created and uploaded to Sketchfab. The opportunities are really endless and Blip Builder provides you with all the tools to create the stories that you want with, with the assets that uh, you have access to. And now that we've integrated Sketchfab into Blip Builder, creating these stories and experiences is even, is even easier than ever. So everyone should definitely go check out Blip Builder to see how you can make your Sketchfab models go even further. So we definitely encourage everyone to go to blipr.com and sign up for Blip Builder now to start creating these stories and experiences that you want to share with the world. As you mentioned, it's totally free to sign up, create, import models, and publish AR. So we'll, we'll put, uh, share the link in the chat, but definitely go on there, sign up, create an account, and, and just you know start creating and sort of see where your imagination takes you. And finally, I just want to plug our AR creations competition, where we want to see all the cool and amazing experiences that everyone's created. Submit them to us to show off your work, and you can even win a pair of Nreal Air augmented reality glasses. So that's us today, and we'd love to take this time to answer any questions that you or the audience may have. And, and while we're going through questions, I think I'll probably just leave um, this, this page up so anyone who's interested in viewing the experience can scan the QR code um, and, and go through it there. Nice. Thank you, Zaire. Well, that was very cool. Like, um, not being familiar with um, Blip Art or Blip Builder um, before, it was really, really cool to see how easy it is to build something. And for somebody like me who doesn't code, it's cool to see that there are presets, like quick quick links and uh, easy ways for someone who's not familiar with code to, to build something. We do have um, a few questions from the chat. What I'll do is a couple have been answered um, in the chat, but I'll, I'll read them out here just so people know um, the answer if they're, they're following along with the video. Coffee Seeker Latsu asked, um, can we integrate a hyperlink in Elements, for example, a 3D bottle with a link to where you can buy the real product? And I believe the answer is yes, you can indeed do that. You can assign a URL to 3D assets and that will open up um, a URL, a second, I suppose, URL from the augmented reality um, experience. Anything yeah, to add so, there? Yeah. yeah, so exactly as um, uh, Steve showed in the demo, the asset that we clicked had a touch action to go to a different scene, but there's several actions. So any asset, any asset or model you have in the scene can be, uh, yeah, you can have it play an audio, play a video, go to a product page, go to a website. Um, you know, pretty there's a wide range of things that you can do there. So you can add full interactivity to everything that's actually inside the scene. So it's not just, uh, you know, it's not limited to just being something that that you look at, but actually can drive conversions drive through to, to, you know, to, to any funnel that, that you want to, to lead your users to. 
Nice, nice, very cool. Okay, um, next question was from Neor Amir. Uh, can those comfortable with coding control the scene animations more specifically, or do you have to do that by the template animation effect? Um, and the answers that we've seen in the chat um, that you could use the SDK or the Unity SDK if you want more advanced control. Is there any advice there for somebody who already knows a bit of coding, which which direction they should go? Yeah, I mean, so as I mentioned at the start of the presentation, we've, we've got full sort of solution stack. One of those is our SDK tool, which integrates with all the popular 3D frameworks, integrates with Unity now as well. So, you know, anyone familiar with those, um, familiar with coding, familiar with those frameworks, uh, definitely should take, uh, should check it out and and access our SDK to, you know, just bring those experiences to life. Blip Builder itself is just a really accessible way uh, to create really powerful and compelling AR without needing to, to do that coding. Um, as Steve showed, there's there's a lot of uh, functionality and a lot of flexibility in terms of what you can do. Um, you know, we saw with the lighting, creating those, those strobe lighting effects. Um, so so you definitely can get, you know, a, a very long way with Blip Builder alone. But for those people who want a lot more control and a lot more flexibility in terms of the other stuff that they want to plug into the experience, uh, we definitely would direct users to go check out uh, our SDK tool. Awesome. Awesome. Um... Nero also had a, a question about whether the web uh, version of a, an experience is compatible with Flam for initializing the scene on the ground. I believe the answer is yes. Yeah, 100%. So we recently um, announced our a Slam integration into, into Blip Builder um, and our SDK, which, you know, ex exactly as he said, so you can create experiences that uh, anchor to any flat surface that, that the camera identifies. So whether that's a table, a kitchen counter, you know, or anything else, um, you know, uh, that that that's been released. We're, we're constantly updating our Slam technology to to make sure that it is, you know, uh, the best it possibly can be. So we definitely encourage everyone to to, to check it out. Go, you know, as, as soon as you sign up for Blip Builder, when you start to create a project, there's actually three different types of AR that you can create. Hmm. Um, this experience that we've created is a a gyro experience, which actually takes place around the user in the 360 sphere around the user. You could also create an experience which anchors to an image target, which is very useful for activating you know product packaging or activating posters and flyers mm -hmm. and then you know just as he said the, the third way for you to launch ar is directly through slam which is where you just focus on building the experience and when it's published anyone can identify any flat uh, surface and the content will just anchor and sit on that table or on that kitchen counter okay understood so um somebody in the chat actually asked about whether um the example here um they're asking why, why they couldn't kind of move into it i suppose they could move left and right that would be a different kind of um experience that you're yeah yes yeah. So, yeah so so this experience as as, as i mentioned is, is is a gyro experience where it actually augments around the user mm -hmm. so for, for, for this sake we've just done was directly in front of the user but you can you know literally as user can can move around in a 360 degree with their phone and you can augment content behind them to the left to the right, right. above and below um and and you know we found that to be really useful for this particular use case um if, if someone wants that more uh, immersive experience where they can walk around the experience themselves and leave it anchored then definitely check out some of the uh marker tracking experiences or some of the slam type experiences that that will provide that type of ar engagement awesome awesome yeah that makes sense as well the um so the gyro um experience it has blip are kind of found that that's kind of the one of the easiest ways that people can consume ar is it is that a fair kind of uh, explanation that pe somebody who's never used AR before, if they look through their phone and they can just move around, they don't have to kind of worry about anything too complicated. Yeah, exactly right. So, I mean, um, it, it, exactly as you said, it just, it augments in front of you and, and and as a new AR user would naturally, you know, be quite figuring out what's going on. That actually works really well because in, in a gyro experience, you sort of uncover more and more content, the more you explore. So Jira definitely has um, use cases where it, you know, definitely can really make the difference. Um, but, but the, you know, there may be certain times where it makes more sense to use Slam or to use market tracking. As I mentioned, mm -hmm. activating a product uh, packaging experience, you know, market tracking is just the go-to, you know, uh, best type of tracking technology you can use for that because the user, all they have to do is scan a QR code and then locate the, the image that they want to locate. And you can have content augmented literally coming out of it. You can have videos overlaid or anything like that. So it's all about the more you use this technology, the more you you realize uh, certain use cases where certain things make more sense and are more applicable, especially for you know helping the user understand how we're going to navigate this scene, how we're going to get the most out of it. Um, and, and the best way to sort of figure that out is just to start using the tool, start experimenting, 
uh, creating multiple projects. As we said, it's totally free. There's no limit on the number of projects you can create. Publish it, share it with everyone, get you know user feedback on, did it make sense? Were they a bit lost? Um, and they can sort of jump back in and you know really start to iterate your 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 projects a lot faster than you traditionally would be able to with with some of the heavier um you know coding type experiences hmm. so if if you create um an experience can you update it is that you know you can make changes even once yeah, it's yeah so 100 yeah so 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 built into blip we've got version history so you can uh yeah update it you can go into it we you know we've got a fully functioning cms system as well so it could be a case of you know maybe you publish something with some specific copy or content on it then maybe the next day you want to update the date you, you want to you know duplicate it and and you know change it into a different language so you know perhaps if you're doing a product launch just as um you know was one of the questions in the, in the chat section uh you know by all means you could create that experience and it, it goes to the product page but then if if there's a change in the product if you know the price goes down or anything like that you can alternatively jump straight back into the project update that copy um, and then just republish it and it will work on that same link that everyone already has access to so it's not a case of having to go back and just swap out the Stop, qr yeah. codes or anything like that mm -hmm. so again it's a really really efficient way to just you know build build once and then just continue to to iterate and add more content and continue to uh you know keep it alive rather than just making something that's just static built once and yeah so, your, your and qr code will stay the same if you publish again what it'll stay the same from the first time that you publish so you can update the same experience without having to give the users new qr right. codes or something okay okay cool very cool um, got a few more questions, so I'm going to try and get get through them a bit. Um, uh, Coffee Seeker Latsu again. Can Blipar assist in the production of a campaign or project? Yeah, hundred percent. So uh, as I said, um, maybe, maybe if I go back to our, our solution slide, we've we've got a, a stack of solutions to um, you know what, what, whatever the case is, um, and one of those is our studio team that works mm -hmm. with some of you know the biggest brands in the world to help launch sort of premium campaigns, world world class campaigns, award winning campaigns um you know to share you know to, to global audiences so 100 percent. If, if you do have something like that where you where you need more of a managed service you know uh, support consultation support with uh you know strategies and everything like that 100 percent. get in touch with our studio team and and they can support you know some uh you know your brand or your organization in that. What, what's the best way to make ar work for you okay um what we'll do is, is maybe if there's a particular link to send people to for studio b kind of stuff we'll put that in the description um, after the, yeah. the stream. Um, going on, um, are there any plans for a future integration with visual positioning system? And I have no idea what that is, so I'm assuming you guys might. Yeah, um, so, you know, our, our product roadmaps are, are quite uh, in-depth and we do have a lot of features and developments, um, uh, you know, on, on, on the roadmap in terms of improving the product and we are um, continuously improving the product. Um, in terms of VPS, we don't want to sort of uh, lock down to to any specific uh, tracking technology. As I mentioned, we do have um, you know several different options for creating AR at the moment, and we do have several more uh, on on the roadmap at the moment. So unfortunately, I can't disclose exactly um, what what will be coming soon. But uh, you know, definitely subscribe to our our newsletter and our socials to keep track with all all the continuous product updates and developments that we are making. Nice, nice. Yeah, I, I was thinking as, as we were looking at this because uh, web web AR is still fairly fairly new technology, and it, you know, it's going from having to download an app to just like I was just trying out the QR code um, while you were presenting, Steve, and showing what we we're doing, and uh, how quick and easy that is. It's it feels light years ahead of what was what was happening a few years ago. Um, yeah, not only do you not need an app, you don't need to install anything on your machine to use Blip Builder either. So the entire the entire system is set up to be easy to use, accessible, you know, as few roadblocks as possible for the user to get their AR out there. Yeah, very, very cool. Um, next question is from Pure Pixel uh, BTY, BT. Um, and this is a, a topic close to my heart. When we use Sketchfab free, uh, free Sketch free 3D models from Sketchfab in an AR experience with CC attribution. Do we have to give appropriate credit? And if yes, where and how do we specify? Yeah, so um, the, the first half of that um, question is yes, that is just sort of standard uh, best practice in uh, you know, uh, CC attribution, Creative Commons attribution, that, that's sort of how this works. 
you know, uh, some some people are doing great work, sort of, you know, building and, and populating this this rich library. Um, so it, it's only right that we credit them for for helping make these experiences as rich as they are. And with regards to attribution, Blip Builder actually uh, automatically attributes any models that you import directly from Sketchfab. So when you publish your experience, there'll be uh, in the top right corner, there'll be a small um, pop-up uh, where people can actually check all the Creative Commons licenses for all the uh, models. And it'll be sorted by the different um, licenses as well um, uh, for, for each model uh, with a link to, to the creator's uh, Sketchfab account and their Sketchfab page where they can access all of their models, uh, a link to the di direct page of the actual model as well. So it's not just a case of, you know, just Use, using the models without attribution we're actually ensuring that the people are helping you know populate this library and create these fantastic models that are really taking your ar experiences to the next level um are are, are getting the credit that they deserve and, and and that way anyone who sees the experience can check it out and, and, and navigate to their page and as well and you know you know get in touch with or you know do, do anything that they want to do with that particular author yeah yeah that's awesome because I, I was just trying that as well and it, it just works really smoothly and considering there are only kind of three buttons four buttons on the uh, where they are experience and one of them being the attribution credit i think that's really nice that it's prominent and the creators get um you know something something back for their for their generosity so um last question from the chat uh christina veltry is there a cost to host the blip our builder experience no nope. so 100 uh, free um so that means it's free to sign up uh, you can create an account right now. Um, it's free to create, it's free to publish, um, and it's free to share. So uh, with, within the Blip Builder experience, we do one-click publishing, but we host it on our domain. Um, and, you know, like I said, it's just a QR code which you can share with everyone. There's no additional cost, no sort of hidden cost or anything like that. Um, if, if you are looking for sort of, you know, to host on a custom domain, um, you know, that in, in those cases, um, you might uh, look to go through the SDK route um but otherwise blip builder totally handles everything for you so you literally just have to worry about creating the best experience that you can create um and then you know sharing it with, with whoever you want to share it with awesome awesome very cool um okay so that's all the well let me just check again now that i turned my tablet off um i think that's all the the questions we have from yep yeah, the chat um i had a, a quick question about this is kind of more of a general uh, question um, about kind of uh, you mentioned the different industries that are using or you know um, publishing AR experiences with Blip Builder <clears throat> with Blipper um, accessing all the assets from Ske the Sketchfab library obviously kind of um, is is very useful um, d depending on what you're kind of doing are there any kind of I suppose gaps in the kind of content that you your AR creators are looking for. Um, you know, what should 3D asset creators um, be publishing? And also, have you got any tips for kind of the um, the the specs for a 3D model? Like how how many faces, how many textures for it to work kind of efficiently in um, an AR experience? Sure. I think uh, Steve, you want to tag in with that one? Uh, sure. Uh, in general, you know, you want to keep your assets reasonable. And the, the larger they are, the longer it will take to load. So uh, our general recommendation is, you know, if you keep your models under 10 megabytes, you're probably going to be all right. But your entire scene should be, you know, roughly under 100 megabytes. But this is all very current, you know, current information. This might change in six months, depending on phone capabilities and network capabilities. So right now, those are the ballpark figures. But uh, as far as the... The kinds of content, um, uh, just keeping keeping your models and uh, assets uh, lightweight uh, generally helps you. You know, uh, that's it's all kind of relative, though. The more stuff you add to your scene, the longer it's going to take to load, and that's. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you have any more to add to that. Is there? But... Yeah, just just on, on the use cases, I think um, it's it's. An... I, I don't think it's a case of a uh, specific type of, of, of content, um, given that there's just so many applications for this for, for, for this sort of technology and, and so many different use cases where it can be relevant. I mean, we, we see a lot of traction, particularly with, um, you know, packaged good companies and, and, and uh, sort of retail companies, but equally with, uh, mm -hmm. you know, TV and entertainment as well. So, um, 
you know i i don't think there's a a specific type of, of model that that um is is missing at the moment i mean sketchfab as, as we said is, is a really rich library with access to a lot you know like you mentioned you know nearly five million models so i think just you know sketchfab great continue doing what you're doing and i'm sure when the use cases arise <laughs> and you know it, it will be there on the library mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay um yeah, I suppose there's also something like, I mean, it sounds kind of very simple, but to be discoverable within uh, Blip Builder, things need to have a decent title um, and, and be described as kind of what, what they are. Um, I think it was interesting because sometimes we, we obviously have people publishing all kinds of 3D models on Sketchfab and lots of them are complete scenes. Um, but I suppose there's um, an opportunity to, to pub, you know, to deconstruct things into the like smaller parts so that they can be then re reconstructed in something like Blip Builder or another another platform that Sketchfab mm -hmm. has an integration with. Um, I guess I there is one thing that I can add, the animations in particular, uh, all of the all the animated objects that are in Sketchfab are great for Blip Builder, especially if they have lots of animations embedded in them, because that gives you, it gives the user a lot of, you know, a lot of flexibility of what they can do with your character. If you have, you know, more animations is good to have. Okay, that's that's super interesting. Um, well, as as we're, we're almost kind of running out of time, I wonder if um, just to end, um, like, um, would either of you be able to kind of sort of say anything about kind of the the direction that kind of um, we're moving with these technologies, with three D, with AR, and kind of what you think um, people will be, how people will be consuming these um, experiences? You know, is it always going to be on there desktop on a smartphone and what kind of things will people be doing in your estimation mm. um well maybe, maybe i i can give a quick answer from more of like a, a product perspective and then steve can maybe give more of a, a, a technical answer of, of sort of what he's seeing from you know sort of being under the hood but um you know i think you, you can't escape you know the trend of sort of the metaverse in terms of everyone sort of dropping it everywhere um and i think there's a lot of unknowns in terms of what what it will be how it will manifest um, I think probably the only thing you can say with with absolute certainty is that it's going to be of a scale that no one can can you know that that we've not really comprehended as of yet. So if, you know, um, for, for me, it's 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 all about right. How uh, what's the most efficient way to be able to meet the, you know those scale requirements? What's the most efficient way to be able to augment you know whatever you see around you whenever you see a really interesting you know show that that you really liked or or, or a game that you really enjoyed? How can there instantly be a metaverse experience, you know, right then and there that, you know, e either already exists or if it doesn't exist that you can create and, and you know, share with, with with your friends and family. And I think that's exactly what what, what this uh, integration with, with Sketchfab does through Blip Builder. I mean, you just saw, you know, importing models is, is, is literally a single click, you know, uh, as you mentioned, a, a huge library of, of, of models to work with. And then with Blip Builder, no coding, just drag and drop, you know, within, you know, at times it can even take sort of under an hour for you to just you know just orchestrate things together really well and then as you know the, the one click publishing and then just a qr code to just share anywhere um you know for, for me th that's currently the only way that you can really match the scale requirements needed mm -hmm. um where you you know everything around you can just be augmented and there can just be and you know a, a, a 3d or ar or virtual experience for for whatever a user wants to do so i think definitely with you know we we Blip Builder and SketchUp coming together. We're sort of building out the, the foundations for anyone to just jump on and become a creator for whatever this new platform is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that that's super exciting. And, and the fact that, you know, we've, we've tried to make it as easy as possible, remove as many barriers, made it entirely free to use. Um, you know, we'd love to just see a whole new generation of creators just just come on and, you know, just 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 start creating all, 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 all the cool things that, that, that come to their minds. Nice. I mean, the only thing that I have to add is just, yes, we, we can't imagine how much this is going to explode in the future because the, there's, you know, the, the VR headsets are increasing in popularity just every day. We have the potential of AR glasses coming online at some point, and this has been difficult for people, but it's, it's getting there. It's getting close. So when that happens, this, all of these things are going to, you know, come together and, you know, people laughed at the first URL that you saw at the end of a movie or something in the credits is like, oh, you know, go to our movies URL. Th that was funny at the time, but now, you know, the internet is everywhere, of course. But 
the the AR has that same potential, and it's it's all converging right now. We have these assets that are in common formats that everybody can use and everybody can produce, and we have these devices that are just on the verge of like uh, you know being mainstream. So I think it's it's getting very close. So, but mm-hmm. right now you can see this on your phone. So that's the place where people can see it immediately right, and right, everybody right. everybody can see that yeah so, any so the, any any browser any social media platform you know just sort of where the audience already is so we don't need to wait for people to download apps install apps or do anything like that um which is just you know super exciting to be able to just see something and to be able to create something and just get it right into the people's hands um you know i think that that is just the the, the best way to to get the return on, on on your investment in terms of you're actually go, putting the time and effort into creating this experience. You just want everyone to be able to access it as soon as possible. Cool. All right, then. Well, all I think that remains to say is thank you both very much for your time and for, for showing us around um, Blip Builder and um, speaking with us. It's been been really interesting for me. Um, and I think the, the audience to the stream as well have, have enjoyed it too. So thank you very much. Um, and maybe we can do this again sometime. Perfect. Great. Thank you. Um, Yes. All right, everyone. Well, we'll be back next month um, with another stream. Um, so, yeah, keep an eye on YouTube and social channels. All the links um, are in the description or will be in the description um, that we've mentioned in, in the, uh, the stream right now. Um, so, yeah, have a great rest of the day, everyone. See ya. <laughs>